friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Dasha and today I'm going to be going over all of the books I read in the month of October. October was spooky season and I did manage to get to five books. One was a thriller, one was a straight horror, and the other was kind of a horror and a couple of other books. So we're going to get through all of those. As usual, I go from my least favorite to my favorite book of the month. So let's get right into it. My first book that I want to talk about is The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. This was an arc that I got from Night Galley, so thank you very much. And if you want to see my full written out review, I have my Goodreads linked down below, so you can actually go check that out. Um, but I was disappointed by this. So Stuart Turton is the author of The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which is a kind of speculative thriller that I absolutely loved when I read it. So I was really, really anticipating this one. And the premise of this one is also quite interesting. So you're following this detective duo. One of them is locked up for a crime he may or may not have committed. And there is someone that warns um, this ship that's sailing to Amsterdam that there might be a devil aboard the ship. So they have to race to save everyone's lives. And while the premise was great, the execution fell really flat. So I ended up giving this a three stars because there are some things that I liked about it, but we'll start with what did not work. Um, the writing was a big thing for me in this one. I do typically really enjoy Stuart Turton's writing and I found that some of his usual like just excellence in writing was present in this. He has a really good sense of human nature and when he writes people, it seems very genuine, but it felt as though because of this book and the time period that it's set in and because they were on a ship the whole time, it felt as though he did a ton of research for nautical terms in like the 17th century. And then he just like word vomited them all on this, the page and it just got a little bit excessive. I felt as though he was just trying to shove it down our throats that he knew nautical language and it just really got like it just was not really that fun to keep reading these terms that i didn't really know and care about and it just yeah like i said it was just excessive another thing that kind of irked me was that uh the way he wrote woman was not obviously i was not at all misogynistic but it was just al almost like overcompensating so obviously during this time women did not have a ton of agency and one of the main central people you follow is a woman and it just felt like he was overcompensating for her lack of agency by almost inserting the fact that he didn't believe that women should not have agency he just like overplayed it so it's like anytime that she would mention that women were not supposed to be intelligent um women were not supposed to figure things out on their own it just felt as though the author took that and just overcompensated afterwards by saying that she could do what she wants and and she knew better and she would one day be able to show off her intelligence and obviously while that is a great message at a certain point if you keep repeating it and hammering it in it gets kind of unpleasant and detracts from the 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 showing aspect rather than just telling us that this character is capable of these things so that felt a little excessive to me i also found that the pacing was a little bit off uh, the beginning was just such a slow start and I understand you have to do a little bit of exposition where your characters talk to other people and kind of get the lay of the land because the ship has a lot of people on it. There's a ton of different people who run the ship and there's a ton of passengers. So you have to kind of understand who everyone is in order to get the story to move. But it just felt like it dragged too long and I felt like there was just conversations for conversation's sake. And I did not find myself particularly intrigued it took all of me to get through this book and this book is quite long it's a chunky book how very dare you is this the time the burner just turned on so anyways one of the last things that kind of irked me was this famous detective duo the actual detective who was locked up this sherlock holmes-esque figure he was barely present throughout the book and we just kind of got him at the beginning and the end and like a few other parts. You didn't get to see his great skills. You only heard people talk about him and it wasn't enough to make him as impressive as he's supposed to be. So that irked me. What I did like, I loved, 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 loved the atmosphere, the setting of the ship. You could almost hear the wood cracking and creaking and the waves crashing and the dark gloominess of the storm. That part was fantastic as I would expect from Stuart Turton and I found that the idea of it and some of the um, 
some of the the aspects of this devil aboard the ship were really well done some of the things that this devil did were really cool and really well done like i said just overall was too slow the intrigue was lacking for me and the writing was kind of sketch so that was disappointing however if you did enjoy the seven and a half deaths of evelyn hardcastle you may still enjoy this and if you enjoy this kind of speculative thriller genre in general this might work for you so i do not want anyone to be scared from reading this it just did not work for me all right next i want to talk about another disappointing one the haunting of hill house by shirley jackson this is the only horror i read all month and it was not for me <laughs> So this is a kind of gothic horror. It was written in the 50s. It's become a classic now. And it's about a researcher that goes to Hill House to kind of investigate the paranormal happenings there. He takes with him a group of random assistants that he just found by making some cold calls. And one of them is Eleanor, who you kind of follow. And, um, meh. So let me start with what I liked, uh, just because... I do think there are more pros to this book than cons as opposed to The Devil in the Dark Water. So Eleanor has what seems to be kind of social anxiety. So it was really, really interesting to read about that uh, throughout the beginning of this book when she starts interacting with new people. I also really liked how this was done because it sets her up as a bit of an unreliable narrator. So that was really cool. The atmosphere. This fucking house, dude, is... so spooky, so alive in a sense, like the house has a feeling to it. You feel it, you are there when you read this. So well done. I have nothing but good things to say about the atmosphere. The ending was also probably my favorite part about it. Other than the atmosphere, the ending was so good. And because this book is so short, if you like a good ending, even like if you don't care about anything else, just go for it. The ending slapped so much ass. It was so good. What did not work for me was some of the other characters and the way that everyone reacted to the paranormal happenings in the house just did not work for me. It felt highly unrealistic and maybe it is because it was written in the 50s and we have a different view of paranormal happenings. I don't know how society viewed paranormal happenings back then. If any of this happened to me, I would positively shit my pants and these people did not and it took me out of it. It might be a super personal thing but that's how I reacted to it. I also felt as though it just kind of dragged a little bit. I can't quite put my finger on what it is about like the pacing and some of the writing but it just was not not quite there for me. I think if you enjoy gothic horror I think if you do not enjoy anything along the lines of like gore or body horror, this would be for you. There is none of those like more modern horror tropes of like excessive slasher-ness and you know, gory scenes. This is very much gothic and just ominous, you know, just, just picture it. A crackling fireplace, a nice glass of whiskey, a nice plush carpet with a dark wood paneled library and a fucking ghost banging at the door. I could not ask for anything more for my atmosphere and if that's something you enjoy too, I would absolutely still try this. Something about it just didn't quite work. The next book I want to talk about was definitely more of a success. A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin, the third book in the Song of Ice and Fire, better known as Game of Thrones series, and uh, fuck yeah, this was good. So this book has some of my favorite scenes from the whole series. I even had to like tab one of them so I could just open it and look at it and cry every time. Jon Snow and Igret at Castle Black. I can't handle it. I can't handle thinking about it. And reading it was even worse. If you don't know, I've been doing a reread of the series because I binged the entire TV show last year and then I decided to get back into the world, but I thought I would try actually reading it. Um, and I still would recommend watching the show first, to be quite honest with you, because it really helps for visualizing characters because there are a lot of them in this series. Um, one thing I do say every time I read a George R. R. Martin book, and I will keep saying it, his character work is 
incredible. So good. Everyone is truly morally gray. Everyone is truly fully fleshed out. Everyone is someone that you want to root for and you simultaneously want to punch and it makes sense. All of the character decisions make sense. All of the politics make sense. It's all fucking fantastic. And I will also add, I especially noticed it in this book. I've heard a lot of people um, rightfully criticize how George R. R. Martin uses women because obviously this setting is based on history, but if you're creating a fantasy world, you have the option of changing it. So people were rightfully frustrated that women are still given less agency and they are given less authority and they're not, you know, they're considered these silly little creatures. I do want to make a counterpoint to that, however, and like I said, I noticed it a lot more in this book than I did in the other two because you, you know, you get to know the characters even better. I feel as though, I feel as though even though the women in this world do have less authority and they are taken less seriously, the women that you follow in the series are incredibly strong and they all try to subvert expectations and I think they're all written in a way that is respectful at least like the main characters and you feel as though these women really are strong and very very powerful women by their own right not because a man made them so and that's one thing I really respect about the women in the series I really really enjoy how they are turning expectations for women in this world right on their head and they're saying fuck you I get to do whatever the hell I want because I can and I I don't know I find the way they're written great if you have some differing opinions, I'd be really curious to uh, hear them because I've heard many different things, like I said, but I personally find that the women in this series are just absolutely incredible. All the characters are incredible. I ended up giving this a four star because I found it was entirely too long for what it should have been. Other than A Dance with Dragons, I think this is the longest book in the series and it didn't really need to be. There were a lot of kind of supposedly character building scenes, but even then I didn't think they were necessary personally. Um, but I also said earlier that some of my favorite scenes in the whole series are in this book, if you know anything about the show. The Red Wedding in this book, the uh, battle at Castle Black in this fucking book, Joffrey's Wedding in this fucking book. All the good shit, good shit happens here. So I still love my experience reading this. I still thought it was fantastic. 10 out of 10 would still recommend this entire series to any fantasy fan because goddamn, I love this world and the characters so much. I think I've just accepted the fact that the sound's gonna be fucking wonky in this video because it's the only time I had to film and of course the printer goes off, the laundry machine's fucking having a field day, everything's just happening so I'm doing my best, I apologize if the audio is fucked, I'll try to fix it in editing. The next book I want to talk about is... I don't know which one I want to talk about first because I love them both equally. Um, We'll go with Permanent Record by Edward Snowden. This is a nonfiction that I really wanted to read this year. It is on my 20 for 2020 and I got to it. My library hold came in. Yeet. Uh, this is Edward Snowden's account of everything leading up to his decision to expose the US government for spying on its own citizens. And as I pretty much expected, I fucking loved it. He took a different approach than I expected, I will admit. He started talking about how he even developed a love for computers when he was younger. Uh, he talked about his parents both being involved in the US military and kind of how that shaped his decisions and his worldview. And then he went through very much his detail of being hired at the government and how he started, you know, getting inklings that something was wrong and how he started gaining information and how he started talking to people. And it was so detailed, but it was not so detailed that you got bogged down by technical speak. It was very easy to understand. He had some really, really impactful and thoughtful messages behind what he was writing. He never once tried to make himself out to be the hero. He talked about how hard it was for him and how, you know, even for a while, he didn't even think he was doing the right thing. And there was just a lot of it that I thought was so, like I said, so insightful. And at the end of the book, you just, you feel so rattled because you realize how little the government gives a shit about you. And it's just kind of scary, but like, God damn, it was so good. 
I just respected the shit out of everything that he's done. And even though this had a bit more of an autobiographical tone and structure to it, I really did still enjoy it a lot more than I thought I would. And I would absolutely recommend this to anyone who is at all interested in kind of going deeper beneath what the US government is up to and finding out more about this surveillance program because he does go in depth about it but it is also very human it is also a little bit funny and lighthearted, and like i said extremely thought-provoking incredibly done i think this is a book that's going to stick with me for years and the final book we're going to talk about is death note the manga i have the black editions this is actually the second one because i lent the first one to my boyfriend because after I read it, he was like, you are making so many annoying noises, I need to read it now. And I was like, yes, take it. So uh, that same day, or actually the day after, I went and grabbed volume two because I could not put it down. And spoiler alert, I read this yesterday. It was phenomenal. I am obsessed. So Death Note is a manga that follows Light Yaganami, who is this boy genius, and he's getting very bored with his real life. Perchance he comes across a death note, which is a death god's notebook in which the death god usually writes people's names down and they die pretty much instantly unless he specifies the, the method of death. So Light takes it upon himself to rid the world of criminals and robbers and murderers and everyone bad in society. And it fucking goes wild from there. This was five out of five stars. This was incredible. I need the third one now because like I said, I already finished the second one. I cannot get enough of this. It is so masterfully done that this set the tone for me for any other graphic novel or manga from now on. Before, I'd only read a couple and I didn't really know how the storytelling is quite supposed to work uh, through picture form, so I didn't really know where my ratings really stand. But something about Death Note is so masterfully done that you cannot help but just get so sucked into it. The way that the... <laughs> Fuck, man. Like, the way that the author and illustrators choose to show certain things on page and not show certain things that are happening and create the intrigue and the way they choose to use metaphors, visual metaphors, is so, so good. And the way they build tension in scenes, like throughout a lot of the book, once the Death Note is discovered by Light, he is able to see his Death God and he kind of follows around behind him all the time. So you have like a totally normal scene and you just see this fucking terrifying death god like in like the bottom corner of the frame. And it's so fucking cool and it's so incredibly done. I truly do not know if I will ever be able to read another manga or comic again because of how well this is done. I. I think the storytelling in this is just absolutely insane. And yes, I will be watching the anime after I read all of them. But I am actually quite glad that I decided to start with the books so I could be like sitting on the edge of my seat, page turning into the middle of the night because I have to know how it ends. I like, god damn, this is so good. I don't know what else to say. This is absolutely a surprise for me. I didn't expect to like it this much, but it is absolutely a favorite of the year and definitely a favorite of all time now. It's just incredible. God damn. So that is everything I read in the month of October. Let me know if you've read any of these. And like I said, if you have anything to say about A Song of Ice and Fire, I'm actually very curious because I feel like I don't have a lot of people in my life that have read it. So if you have, I'd love to talk to you about it. Other than that, all my social media is linked down below. You can always give me a shout out there and I will see you guys in the next one.